hi today i am discussing about step by step guide for preparing ug bar pg project report i am abbas watoli assistant professor of commerce amal college nilambur i wish this presentation will help degree and pg students from social science subjects in preparing their project reports at uj or pg level project means detailed study of a topic or an issue of your interest in a systematic manner steps in project work i have classified the whole process of project work into seven steps one topic selection two synopsis writing three theoretical framework for questionnaire preparation 5 data collection and tabulation 6 data analysis and interpretation 7 project report writing first topic selection you should choose a topic of your area of interest or your area of expertise that is very important you can narrow down from your favorite subject in a relevant concept in your defined population example you are interested in banking and take a concept agricultural loans then define a population say a particular district just like you have to narrow down your topic in your specific one your study may be based on primary or secondary data if you are studying agricultural loans you can conduct a survey among the borrowers to know their satisfaction then it is a primary study similarly you can also study the trend of agricultural loan in a particular bank for a last 5 years then it become a secondary study and most importantly give specific and self explanatory project title in the same example we can give the title of our study as trend of agricultural loan a study with a special reference to malappuram district now it is a specific and self explanatory the second step in a project work is synopsis writing synopsis or project proposal is the plan of your research it consists of objectives of the study you can define two to three objectives for your study in the example of agricultural loans you can have objectives like to study the trend of agricultural loan during the last 5 years to analyze npl in agricultural loan during the last 5 years etc you can set your objectives second significance of the study significance here means importance of the study or how your study is going to be useful to others here you can say this study will help the bank manager to understand the uh, about the agricultural loan in the last 5 years just like you can mention its importance to society or to the particular firm or even to the researcher third part of the synopsis is research methodology you have to mention how you are going to conduct this research it may be descriptive or analytical descriptive is just you are just interested in describing the fact collected from the survey analytical you are adding interpretations or conclusions to your findings then it is called analytical research tell you an example if you are just uh, uh, collect conducted a survey and you says that uh, 
the agricultural loan trend of agricultural loan is increasing for the last five years that is a descriptive research and if you are saying that the agricultural loan is increasing last five years because of the increase in cultivation or because of the increase in agricultural activity that means you are adding a conclusion to it that is why it is called analytical research sampling plan you have to decide the method of sampling maybe simple random sampling stratified sampling or even convenient sampling may be used by the students sample size in statistics less than 30 is considered small sample and 30 or above is large sample so you can take sample as 30 50 maximum 100 in case of students analysis tools in synopsis you have to mention the statistical tools you are going to use like ratios percentages tables charts and so on limitations finally you have to give limitations of your study like shortage of time shortage of money uh, it consists of personal and sensitive information so uh, it is difficult to get the exact response from the respondents etc it is much third step in preparing a project is prepare theoretical framework it means you read the concept and theory is related to your subject and explained and you also need to include 10 to 15 previous studies on related topic this will act as a guideline how to conduct the research fourth step is questionnaire preparation and most important step you can prepare questionnaire or interview schedule for primary data collection questionnaire is to be filled by the respondents and interview schedule is filled by the investigator so you should be more careful in structuring questions in the case of questionnaire and but in the interview schedule you will investigator will get a chance to explain the questions to the respondents the first few questions should be about the demographic profile of the respondents in case of individual questions like age gender income education etc in case of institutions questions like uh, date of inception the amount of capital number of employees etc include sufficient number of questions to achieve each objectives you should identify variables for each objectives and questions should be asked about each variable avoid open ended questions because it is very difficult to analyze open ended questions so use multiple choice or scale questions scale questions like strongly agree agree disagree type questions data collection and tabulation after collecting data from few respondents you can think of modifying questionnaire to make it more easy for answering by the respondents emphasize on genuineness of response rather than number of responses that is very important 
Use online questionnaires like Google Forms for data collection because it saves time on data entry. Tally sheets can be used for summarizing responses manually. Sixth step in project or research is analysis and interpretation. Analyze data in the light of objectives. Please understand, research is a sequential process. There must be link from its beginning to the end. You set certain objectives, your questions include questions to, that leads to your objectives, then you make analysis that leads to your objectives, just like there must be proper connection. You can use tables, charts, percentages, ratios, averages, etc. for data analysis. You can also include simple statistical tests like chi-square, if required, and suitable for your data. Excel, SPSS, etc. can help you a lot in analysis. And similarly, for cross-tabulation. Cross-tabulation means you are preparing a table based on more than one variable at a time. Example, you are classifying the population on the basis of gender. It's a one-way classification. If you are classifying the respondents based on gender as well as education, then it's two-way classification. That type of type classification is called cross tabulation. After the analysis, every analysis should follow interpretation. Explaining the meaning of a table or an analysis in few sentences is called interpretation. Based on interpretation, you can arrive at your findings and suggestions. The last step is report writing. Your report should have certain standard format. You can use MS Word default font or Times New Roman. Font size 12 for text and 14 for heading. Line spacing 1.5 or 2. Normal margin. Alignment should be justified. Give single line borders. Give header and photo. Print your report on one side. You can wind a spiral or heart. Thank you. You can contact me. Get more details from our department blog www.dcml.wordpress.com and also you can mail me at abbaswatoli at yahoo.com. Thank you for watching.